Hello, everyone. Hello, people returning to the podcast and people who are new to the podcast. I am not Landon. I'm a guest. My name is Jonas. So if this is your first time here, welcome. Stick around when he comes back from his trip. Who knows when he'll be back? He actually left without even explaining himself. So so we'll see what happens with that. But today, I wanted to talk about longevity. In in September of 2022, I left my job to start my own business. It was it was a huge leap of faith for me, um, and I had to be very okay with being uncomfortable. I had to be very okay with not fully understanding. I had to be very teachable. These are things that still need to be happening. You know, it's been coming up on a year couple months away, a few months away. There's several things that I've learned about regarding longevity that I want to share uh, with you guys today. And it's definitely like not all just wisdom that I've pulled out of thin air. It's been people that have poured into me or talks or podcasts or music or, you know, conversations I've had with friends. Those, those are the places where this wisdom has been pulled from my relationship with God, etc. Everyone has ideas. Everyone has an idea of what they want to be doing, what they like to be doing, um, even if they don't fully understand who they are or like have some grand vision for their life. We all have like some inclination of something we enjoy. And um, I forget who said it, but there was some study done and the conclusion was that uh, we have, I think, $4 million ideas per year. Um, but oftentimes, we just don't even sit with them. We don't pay attention to any of them. And we definitely don't follow through with those ideas. So, you know, every human being has all this potential in them. We we take in all of this outside influence. We have the relationships we have. And we oftentimes remain locked. And our potential remains locked. And we don't see any of what could be come to fruition. And I've seen so many of my friends and people I love just begin to pursue something, whether that's a craft of some kind or um, making content or maybe looking for a new job or a new career or trying to find new friendships or anything like that. Um, and oftentimes I find that a huge problem for people is longevity because it's easy in the emotional height of a moment to be like, yeah, I'm going to do this. This is going to be great. I'm going to go and I'm going to go back to school. I'm going to get this degree. I'm going to get this new job. I'm going to quit my jobs. I'm going to start this thing. I'm going to make this album, whatever it is. When we feel our best, it's easy to be like, this is it. This is happening. But when we feel not our best, when we feel our worst, what do we do then? Do we stick to it? Do we put in work that day? Do we let people into the process? You know, what do we do with that? I think it's really important to talk about and open up because oftentimes people just give up for that reason because some days are worse than other days and, uh, you know, the emotions come and go. So I just wanted to hit on three main points that I think are really essential to having longevity with whatever you're doing. Uh, the first is that your vision for what you're doing really needs to be bigger than just you. Sometimes we can get caught up in uh, wanting to pursue something just because of how it makes us feel. Um, that maybe it's just we, we have a lot of fun doing it or we, it's relaxing or, um, you know, whatever it is, or it's like we derive some kind of pleasure from it, whatever that looks like. When it just has to do with us, the backbone of it can be kind of weak because it's only for our benefit. And so if we feel one day that it's no longer necessary, then what makes it necessary? But if you feel one day that it's not necessary, but you have a whole you know, audience of people who need what you're creating and are benefiting from it, um, you know, it just puts more fire under your feet to keep going. And if it's only about you, then, and you're your own leader, and you are your own source of happiness and joy and fulfillment and all these things, there, 
you'll find that you'll hit a ceiling very quickly and you won't feel like you have any reason to continue and it'll end up pulling you farther from community instead of bringing you into community where there is opportunity for growth and refinement and being challenged and um, learning new things and uh, just everything that is life-giving that comes from community. So to put it simply, your vision needs to be bigger than just you because if it's not bigger than just you, it'll live by you, it'll die by you, it'll pull you away from community, it'll pull you away from what's life-giving about community and you'll find yourself isolated and people just scientifically, we do not thrive in isolation. This is just a simple fact of life. And so I think it's important for your vision to be bigger than you um, so that it's life-giving, you know, not only to you, but to others. And there's something really special and beautiful about it expanding outside of the sphere of your own life and benefit. And I don't know if there's a greater feeling than seeing how your hard work has benefited somebody else's life. And it, it's something worth pursuing and it's something worth submitting to the process to become unlocked so that you can provide that for more than just yourself. And two, on vision, I think this was something that I really needed to focus on was knowing how to talk about it because I had all these ideas, I had kind of this abstract way of thinking about it and that's great and that's how I think about things, but it needs to be, you need to be able to communicate it to people who have no frame of reference for what you're doing so that you can bring people into the fold and so that you can expand your world and create the world that you actually see. So putting language to it simply, you know, I heard it said before that um, if you can't, articulate your vision in a simple sentence, you don't understand it well enough. So I think putting time and energy into putting it into simple language is really beneficial, not only for you, but for other people to understand it. And it'll actually help you to nuance out the ideas more and build the world more and uh, you know create something that can last. The second point of longevity is you need community around you that cares about you more than they care about what you're doing. We, we aren't just a culmination of the things that we do and having people around you that know you as a person, not just as like an output, that's gonna serve the longevity of whatever you're doing because they're there to um, help you grow and to support you and to challenge you and to remind you that you're a human being and that you have very human needs and you need friendship and you need to talk about things and you need uh, you know, space to, to talk about your ideas and to be encouraged in them. I know that throughout this whole process for me, uh, my friends and my fiance have been very, very instrumental in just like keeping me from going crazy because <laughs> it's been really hard at some points and I would never have been able to do it by myself and my, my family too. And two, I think when you have people who see what you're doing from an angle other than the one that you have, they're able to give you valuable input. Like what's their experience of, of what you're creating or what you're doing or what you're pursuing? Like how, what's the value that they see in it? What is the potential danger that they see in it? What, you know, how can they encourage you in it? Having that input is so vital for just continuing along the path towards whatever your goal is. I know for me that I can get super like tunnel vision when it comes to pursuing something or working hard towards something. And I can forget simple things like having fun or going outside, which are things that I love to do, but I had to come to an understanding of like, those, those are actually priorities still. Even when you are working really hard and you don't yet see the fruit from it that you want to see, being a human being about it and being a human being in the process is um, super important. Otherwise, you're going to get where you want it to be and you're not going to feel like you. You're going to feel like, okay, what else do I need to do? What else do I need to accomplish? Like You won't be able to enjoy it if you can't learn to enjoy the process as it's happening. So I think that that's super vital is just 
learning how to enjoy the difficulty, learning how to enjoy the process, learning how to enjoy the fact that you're learning and you don't know everything, learning how to enjoy the fact of admitting to your friends that you need help or that, uh, like asking them to go out of their way for you, which I think was challenging for me because I, for a lot of people probably don't want to feel like a burden when it comes to their relationships. But when you give people the opportunity to, to go out of their way for you and express that friendship to you, it'll build a relationship. And, um, so by me being in a situation where I've been challenged in many ways, um, on this path of longevity, I've needed people to come alongside me and help me out more than I've ever needed them in the past. So if you actually, uh, lean on community during this time, it'll grow you as a person and it'll help you cross the finish line of what you're setting out to do in a more holistic sense of like not cutting corners and not doing it to the utmost of your ability because you have other people that can tell you whether or not you're doing that, not just you. But that requires vulnerability. You know, like I've had to share with the people closest to me like that, you know, whether it was like a t-shirt that I designed or some idea that I was putting together or something I had written, I had to share with them not only the output of it, but the fact that like, I didn't do this to the best of my ability. And moving forward, I actually really, I need to make sure that I am working harder at it because um, otherwise the world is not fully coming across in the way that it needs to. And so letting people in in that regard where they understand they're like, oh, this actually is not you doing your best um, and giving them a metric will provide uh, com for conversations in the future for them to be like, is this you not trying your hardest again? Or is, is this you, are you doing this differently for some reason? Like there's more of an opportunity for them to give you a meaningful response if you let them understand what you're doing and you let them understand who you are and your challenges as a person too. Um, and if you have relationships with people where they actually want to hear you talk about those things, like invest in those relationships because it's less common nowadays. And maybe it's always been less common to have people who just want to sit there and hear about you and understand you more and, and be your friend. Like that's, that's a great thing. And it's something that you want to pour into and allow people to cultivate with you too. It's not just like, me trying to give them something of value, but it's allowing them to give me something of value by allowing them to see how they can help me or how they can pour into me or how they can challenge me. So when you have those honest relationships around you, you're letting them into the process and even you're telling them, hey, I need encouragement or you're telling them I need help or whatever it is, that's what's going to get you over the finish line because those people in my life, they're not going to let me quit. You know, they're not going to let me uh, cut corners. They're not going to let me change who I am either. So they're, they're helping me to stay consistent in my character. They're helping me to grow within that. Um, and they're also making sure that I get where we all now see that I'm heading, uh, which is hugely important because if it was just me, then I would have already been done with this before I even saw any real fruit from it. And because I've stuck to it, I am now seeing fruit from it, which is super cool. But uh, the last point here, and I've kind of touched on this here and there already, but it's just being committed to the process. Because I, I had unrealistic expectations and ideas for how quickly my brand would take off or you know, what methods were going to make it skyrocket or, you know, like I'm going to have this collaboration happen or this video is going to do super well or, um, oh, it's, it's as easy as watching this YouTube tutorial and this is all I'm going to have to do this whole time. Like it's not easy. I don't care what your goal is. If it is what you're meant to do and who you're meant to be, it's going to be so hard. And I think just admitting that in the beginning is going to save you so much time. Just admitting to yourself, this is going to be hard, but this is super worthwhile also. And that's why it's hard. 
admitting that it's going to be hard in the beginning is going to make it way easier immediately. Because instead of like being surprised when challenges arise or when you're like, oh, I need to learn this new skill or I need to have this difficult conversation or I need to learn balance in this way or I need to work X amount of hours over the course of like this week to make sure this project happens. Whatever it is that comes towards you, if you already have the understanding that this is going to be hard, those are just going to be challenges that you learn how to navigate rather than surprises that like derail your whole experience. And so having that mindset in this has really, really helped me. And there's been plenty of moments where I was trying to edit something or like I was doing something in Illustrator or writing and I was like wasn't clicking and I was super frustrated and I just like wanted to stop. But instead of stopping forever, I would stop, take a break, take a walk, have a conversation, maybe come back to it tomorrow, but I would never quit. I'm never just going to stop altogether because that's not the process that I'm committed to. The process I'm committed to is finishing what I started. And so whatever needs to happen for me to get to that point is going to happen. And that's having close community, which means becoming closer with people on purpose, um, letting them become closer with me on purpose, uh, nuancing out the vision that I have so that I understand what it is. I understand how to build the world around it. I understand how to communicate it to people across all spheres of culture and life so that people can be brought into what I'm doing rather than me feeling misunderstood and like blaming other people for that. And I would say all in all, a huge piece of advice that I really clung to throughout this whole process that I think has been one of the cornerstone pieces is something my friend Kath said to me, we're, we're having a drink one time and she was like, we were talking about our businesses and she she brought up the point like you have to like life is hard regardless of what you're doing like it's just hard there's a lot of hardship in it and there's a lot of beauty and joy in it too but you get the opportunity to choose your hard you get to choose what you're doing that's making your life hard is it that you're working towards something that's worthwhile or is it that you're kind of shuffling along doing the bare minimum and you feel terrible because you're not living to your full potential and you know it and there can be comfort in that there can be like creature comforts and and routines and things that make it a little bit easier to get through life but on the other hand if you're committed to a process that's way bigger than something that you can do by yourself, it opens you up to a whole world of possibilities in your relationships and your potential. And it's a much more worthwhile and fulfilling way to live your life. So my question to you guys is what is what's a dream of yours that you want to pursue or that you are pursuing that you just feel like you need to do? And it's so important to you. I would love to hear it. I know Landon would love to hear it. Just talk about it in the comments. It's a, it's worthwhile to talk about it. It's worthwhile to leave a comment. It's worthwhile to let people in, to let people know, to show people what you're doing. So keep going. I hope that you guys got some tidbits from this video that will aid you in your process. And I'll, I'll see you the next time that I'm on this podcast. And if not here, you can find me on Instagram. Uh, or YouTube at maybe you just need some water um, or my personal account at aka ocean. We'll have that all in the bio if you're interested in seeing what I'm doing. But other than that, great talking to you guys. Have a great day. Goodbye. <laughs>